I'd like to welcome everybody to the November meeting of the Murfreesboro Parks and Recreation Commission. This time we'll call the meeting to order. As usual, we'll start our meeting with the prayer and pledge of allegiance and Shane McFarland to read the latest. Okay. Shane? If you'll bury your heads. Father, thank you for this day and this chance that we have to be here. Uh, Lord, give us wisdom uh, and guidance to make the decisions that we need uh, to the betterment of our community. Uh, we thank you for all the things that you've given us and all the things that you will um, continue to bless us with. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Shane. <clears throat> Everybody should have received their packets earlier in the week, uh, contained in the packets as usual, were our uh, minutes from the previous meeting in October. This time we'll entertain any changes or corrections that need to occur to the minutes, and if there are none, a uh, motion for acceptance. Mr. Chairman, I move we accept the minutes. Second it. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes are approved. We'll move now to our agenda. Item number one is uh, we're going over the annual buy one, get one free holiday special and the New Year's resolution special. And Bart Fight's going to talk to us about that. Bart, welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm here today to present our uh, buy one, uh, get one holiday special, seek your approval. Uh, we've been doing this since 2003, and it's been a great, great success. And in your package, you should have received a flyer about uh, the buy one, get one, and also the 25% off in January. Uh, usually around December, uh, we start getting questions about it. We've already had a lot of questions about it. So what I'm doing today is seeking your approval to offer it again this year uh, on our premium and general pass. Uh, if you buy a year, you get a year free. If you buy a month, you get a month free. Uh, you can buy up to uh, 12 monthly passes for 12 months free. So. Uh, and you can do it in a variation of ways. Of course, a man and wife can get a year free and buy a year. Or, you know, we, our front staff here at Sportscom and Patterson does a great job of matching somebody up with somebody that just want to buy a year. So, uh, you know, cut that down in a half price. So our customers really enjoy that. They get a, a big thrill of that. Plus, once they sign up, they're going to be coming for another year, and we like to see them come back for more. So, uh that that's on the buy one get one free on the yearly and then starting in january everybody knows after christmas everybody's has a lot of meals to eat during december and new years they want to get back into the exercise uh, routine so we've offered a 25 percent discount uh, also in the month of month of january so that that's been a big success and on your your packet that i laid in front of you and sorry this wasn't in your original packet was uh you know our revenues from this since 2007 as you can see, they've uh, you know really gone up year after year, and uh, you know our biggest jump, of course, came from 2009 to 2010 to last year, which uh, you know jumped around uh, you know 26, 27 thousand dollars. So, and that was due, of course, to our renovation. I, you know, we're considering you know the renovation of our new pool with the Borough Beach, so people want to get in on that on that uh, on that pass. So. Uh, you know, this is a great deal. It's the best deal that I've seen, and our, and our patrons and customers really enjoy it, and it's been a big success for us and Patterson, the whole department. So we'll, with that, I'd entertain any questions or seek your approval. Anybody have any questions of Bart regarding the annual specials? If there are none. We need a motion for approval. Move for approval. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? You're approved, Bart. You're still up. You're item number two, Thanks, my man. Sir. <laughs> All right, sir. We've got a few events coming up here uh, shortly in, uh, in December and January. I just wanted to go over briefly with you and just let you know about it. On Friday, December the 2nd, we are having our uh, customer appreciation day from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., and that's where we set up in the lobby. We have refreshments. 
uh, some sausage and biscuits and stuff for our customers that uh, you know come throughout the year. And we'll give them a little grab bag, Christmas bag to take home for Christmas. So uh, you know we really appreciate our customers. We appreciate them coming back year after year, and that's just a day to show our appreciation for them and what they do uh, for the city of Murfreesboro and for our recreation department. Then on Friday, on December. That end, I'm sorry. What's the date? Oh, it's on uh, Friday, December the second. Is that at both locations or just sports? Club? No, it's just sports time. Uh huh. Uh huh. And that should be, like I said, in your packet I laid in, in front of you. Uh, apologize again for not giving an original packet. Another big event we're having coming up is our holiday lock-in, and this is an, an all-night event that uh, will start on 7 p.m. on Friday, December the 16th. <clears throat> And it will run till Saturday morning, the 17th at 7 a.m. So, and that's for kids ages 8 to 14, and the cost is $20. And uh, that's been a big success. I know Thomas Lair will come out. We'll have a game set up. They'll swim for a couple hours. They'll have a, a snack. Uh, we'll hopefully do some uh, holiday crafts and uh, have a movies and stuff. But that's, uh, that's if some parents want to do some extra Christmas shopping and want to drop their kids off uh, with us, we'll have plenty of chaperones available at Sportscom. Of course, we'll we'll lock it up at nine o'clock and be inside the rest of the night till the next morning. So it's a it's a big event. It's been a big success, and I know the I know the parents really enjoy that. Uh, we had an event last Saturday. I put that in there too on November the fifth. We had our MTSU uh, and our Learn the Special Kids and a Special Olympics basketball camp. And Dave Davis brought brought around forty participants, uh, forty kids out that uh, took part in this. This clinic and Kermit Davis with MTSU, he brought the whole basketball team from MTSU and out of his busy schedule to bring them out there for a couple hours. So that I really appreciate MTSU and the uh, and Kermit Davis for bringing them out. The, the kids, you know, got a big big thrill out of seeing those those big players out there playing. They signed autographs, they signed uh, calendars, and they got to meet them up close and personal. And that was uh, that was a big event, you know, in their year. And they they've asked about it every year early. So it's been a that's a huge success. Like I said, I want to thank Coach Kermit Davis for bringing them out. We do have another event on Saturday, December the 17th. We're going to have an, another race. It's run with scissors, and it's going to be at Richard Siegel Complex Soccer Com at the Soccer Complex at Richard, Richard Siegel Park. Uh, a lot of people say runs with scissors. That's uh, you know what does that mean? You know, because you, you know, it sounds like they're running with scissors, but they're really not. Uh, what it is is trying to get school supplies for the city schools. They bring supplies, and they can uh, uh, register for $25, and the day of event is $35. So any questions there? Jennifer Joins does a great job of putting this together, and you can call Sportscom and, and talk to her at 895-5040. She's putting this race together, and we're hopefully hoping to have a big turnout for that. Uh, and the last thing I want to mention is, uh, of course, 2012, our annual polar bear plunge coming up on Saturday, January the 7th. And uh, we'll have our Arctic adventure from 8.30 to 10, and then we'll go outside at 10 a.m. And, and take the plunge. So I invite everybody to come participate, and everybody's invited. So uh, I know Mr. Bratcher has been our MC for years, so... That's so he doesn't have to jump. <laughs> Rumor has it he's jumping this year. Just, so. For the record, I'll be willing to volunteer okay. my services as MC if Chris wants to jump. Okay. That's, that's why I hold something electrical so mm -hmm. I don't have to pay. <laughs> Those new microphones are waterproof, aren't they? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I, that's just a few things going on. It's going to be a bit, the rest of the month will be busy and also in December. But uh, just want to let you know what, what was going on at Sportscom and uh, – Appreciate your service with the with the commission. Anybody got any questions for Bart? Just a quick one, Bart. I know we'll talk more about this maybe next month. But the polar bear plunge. How many folks did we have last year? We had over I want to say four hundred, yeah. six hundred, and we brought we brought in uh, a lot of food there for the uh, Murfreesboro City Schools Food Resource Center, and it, it's a great event. It's turned into really huge, especially in the gym. We have our Arctic Adventure. Thomas Laird gets that all together for us, and you know, have T-shirts for sale, films, games for have kids, costume contest. costume contest. It's it's turned into a really huge event. So, uh, you know, hope to see everybody there. I want to give a shout out too for the lock-in. My son is has turned 15 this year, but I know in in all the years past he's participated in that. And he's had a great time. So, thank you. Any other questions or comments? 
Bart. Thanks for being here. Thank Y'all keep you. up the great work. You're doing fantastic. <coughs> Item three, uh, Nate Williams has joined us to give us an update on holiday movies on the square. Nate, welcome. Good afternoon. Good to see you guys. Um, just to kind of add on Bart's, we, last year we brought in over 1,200 pounds of food from the Family Resource Center. And uh, uh, she's very appreciative every year over there at an organization. It's the biggest lump sum of uh, resources they get throughout the whole year. And it usually lasts, and they said, about 70% of the year. So... It's a good thing that people really get involved and uh, donate a lot of food. So um, I'm here to talk about, you know, our department is always looking for uh, new recreational opportunities to offer the citizens. And um, this year we've got the unique opportunity to expand on an event that we do, which is Movies Under the Stars. And um, we've had the opportunity to partner with the county at the courthouse and the Downtown Business Association over the square um, that are going to have extended hours uh, during the time period that we're going to do this. But what we're, uh, what we're planning on doing is we're going to have the, our Murfreesboro Parks and Recreation Presents Movies um, on the Square, which, like I said, is an expansion of Movies Under the Stars. Uh, this is going to be kind of a trial year. We're going to see um, how this captive audience responds as we do it uh, inside the courthouse uh, green space. Um, but we should have a lot of people who are going around shopping who might come over. And we're going to show two movies on two different dates. The first one is November 18th uh, at 6 o'clock. We're going to go uh, show Elf then. It's a good holiday movie, get people excited about the upcoming holidays. And then on December 16th, we're going to show uh, Polar Express, uh, which we're expecting big crowds. Um, uh, we're not going to charge anybody to come uh, to this event. Uh, like I said, it's just a good recreational opportunity. But we are going to take the opportunity to make sure um, we distribute a lot of our rec connections and uh, make sure we promote a lot of our upcoming events uh, and make sure people uh, are aware of all the opportunities that we have, even in the winter months uh, that Murfreesboro Parks and Recreation is offering. So uh, we're really excited about this, like I said, to partner and uh, offer recreational opportunities uh, kind of outside of our park area and expand on what we're doing. So... Uh, going to be good movies. Great, great movies kind of get us uh, ready for the holidays. So uh, I'd love to answer any questions you might have about that and uh, looking forward to it. Are they, and I know you said, are these Friday nights? Yes, sir. These are Friday nights. Uh, two occasions, like I said, they start at 6, six o'clock. Any other questions for Nate? Sounds fun. Okay. Good movies. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Nate. <clears throat> I'm going to turn it now over to uh, Lanny. He's going to give us some various project updates. Lanny? That's right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission. I wanted to uh, come today to um, um, update you on several of the projects we've been working on. I know I've had a lot of questions on, on various projects. The first one I've got on the list is our stream restoration project in Old Fort Park. If you remember, uh, we partnered with the Murfreesboro Water and Sewer Department uh, to um, do some stream restoration and actually put some demonstration projects <coughs> in that met all of the water quality uh, requirements that the city is uh, required to meet and uh, have some demonstration there so that uh, if developers or so forth needed to look at how to make that application, they could do that. Uh, we would also use it for an education piece uh, for city school children and for other applications. That project was completed on September the 16th. We had a ribbon cutting on September the 22nd. Uh, and the Water Department has uh, processed the final change order, which includes a maintenance agreement uh, with uh, uh, Southern Creations for the next year. It starts in January of 2012. And uh, we want to express our appreciation and thanks to the Murfreesboro Water and Sewer Department for partnering with us uh, to provide this project and also help uh, beautify, I think, one of our main parks within the city. I'd be glad to answer any questions you may have about that project before I move on. Any questions? All right, the next one um, that I usually get quite a few questions on is the uh, Greenway development. We are now into phase four development. We're in the appraisal phase. Uh, we should be finishing that very soon. Uh, as soon as we finish, we'll go into the acquisition phase where we will purchase property. And this will be the first time that um, we will actually use permanent easements, uh, conservation easements, instead of purchase as a part of that. because. If you recall, we're going through a lot of residential area, 
And so uh, we think it is better going through there to use the uh, conservation easements uh, for residents. It gives them more access to their property without cutting them off to the river. Um, so we're going to we're going to go that away. Um, with that, uh, we think once the purchasing of the property and the easements are obtained and we get our approval through the state, which we have to go through several approvals because we do have federal money involved, we anticipate our construction to start sometime June of 2012. So phase four will begin somewhere in June of 2012. That will start at the end of phase three, which is right there on Barfield Crescent Road, go approximately three and a half miles to Barfield Crescent Park. So it will take us all the way into the park, and that construction will take approximately one year. Any questions on that project? Questions? <coughs> Okay, another one is the Oakland's renovation. If you recall, we've been working with the Corps of Engineers for, gosh, the guess, the past 12 years on renovation of different areas. Uh, Discovery Center, Murphy Spring, uh, we've just completed the um, trash green right there at the spring. So that project is essentially complete. Uh, what you see there is, is a completed project. Uh, and we're working on Oakland's. And the, the last phase, phase three, will take out the two uh, ball fields there at Oakland's. And we've had several dates. We've come to you and said that we were going to start at different points. Um, one of the federal requirements before construction of that particular site was to have an archaeological study done. The archaeological study has been completed. Uh, we met with the Corps a couple of weeks ago and met with the folks that conducted the archaeological study, along with representatives from the state of Tennessee. And what we're going to have to do is go back and do some modification of our plans at this time, because there was some discovery of some archaeological artifacts in that particular location. So we have to do some shifting. It's not going to be major renovation to the plans, but we do have to go back and, and engage in some plan revision. Um, with that said, we think the plan re revisions, the bidding, and the start of construction will still be sometime in the spring of 2012. And that project will take about six months to complete. So that'll put us somewhere, hopefully, if we can stay on the time schedule, um, and I don't anticipate any other type of delays uh, of finish for that project sometime in the fall, late fall of 2012. I'd be glad to answer any questions on that. Any questions about the Oakland project? That's a good one. What is that project going to consist of when you talk about renovating it? Well, Mr. Turner, what we'll be doing, of course, we'll be taking out the the ball fields, but one of the things that we have done over there is we've tried to plant all the indigenous trees in Tennessee. Uh, there's about a hundred different species of trees, and we have planned that as the next city's arboretum. So 50, 100 years from now, people will look back and say, man, who, who thought about doing that? It's a great project. So far, we've gotten about 80 to 85 percent of those trees to survive. So we're going to be planting more trees. Uh, we plan to have them to where there'll be specimens, giving enough room that when the canopies are fully developed they're not touching. Uh, but we, we plan to put in a green space that will be used for special events. Uh, Oakland's has reenactments, has special days for children over there. Uh, they're kind of pushed for space. I know when they have their washing, churning, and learning days, uh, they'll have anywhere from 1,200 to more children that's coming in. Uh, they need more space. And we're looking at um, tying that in so that looks like all one continuous site. If you go over there now, you'll see the split rail fence that goes around the project. 
it stops at the ball fields. We'll continue the split rail fence around and uh, we'll create a nice green space in there uh, that will that will complement the Oakland's um, mansion and area there, Oakland's Park, but it will also create some areas that we can have special events. I know Nate said something about movies. We could have movies there. We could have art shows. We could have a lot of different special events, concerts, etc. How big of, of an impact would that be for the ball fields being removed and absorbed at other locations? Because we've been, been anticipating this for several years, um, our department has not scheduled any athletic activities on those fields for the last almost five years now. Uh, so we, we've been able to absorb it with the fields that we've got, and we think we're okay at this point. I know that we've we'll used, practicing on those we used some practice. Right. right. We'll just have to try to rearrange some of the practice that's going on. Um, but hopefully um, here sometime in the near future, We'll be starting on the development of the West Park, and we'll be bringing you uh, uh, some proposals for there. And so we think that that will more than supplement for what we're what we're proposing. Any other questions? Never mind. All right, uh, I'll go to the last one, which is Kids Castle. Um, as you recall, um, we came to you and, and made a request to go for a grant. Uh, we were successful. We received $150,000 from the Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation uh, for a matching grant for Kids Castle. Uh, we have since developed a request for proposals, and that request is out now. It's on the street. We had a pre-proposal meeting yesterday. Uh, we had a good turnout. Uh, lots of uh, vendors and contractors that was there interested in the project. Uh, the proposal is due back November the 22nd, or 29th, and um, we're putting a review team together, which will be made up of uh, staff from the Murfreesboro Parks and Recreation Department. Uh, there'll be some members from the original Kids Castle folks uh, will be in that committee, and. Uh, other, we have some other folks there too, but one of the things we're looking for it, it will be two commission members that will serve on the Kids Castle review uh, team. What that will entail is probably making somewhere four to five meetings, I would say two hours per meeting, something like that. Uh, I know Mr. Bratcher has expressed an interest uh, in that already to me. Um, but we'd love to have at least one, if not a couple of more, uh, commission members. Does anybody have any interest in joining Chris on that committee? Only one. Mr. Chairman, it'd be my pleasure. Miss <coughs> right. uh, Miss Baker is informing me that we can only have one member for an open meeting. If you, if you have more than one member um, from the commission, then it would become an open meeting and have to be advertised and open to the public. So just for convenience sake, it may be easier just to have one commission one. member, sir. That's a good point. We'll draw straws. <laughs> but we've definitely got one, so we're good. Thank okay. you, Doug. All right. Well, thank you. And, um, and, and we want to move this. I, I don't think, Miss Baker, thank you for pointing that out, but those meetings are would be open, I would imagine. They would be if open, and if we need to advertise yeah. those, we can. Yeah, I don't. I need to go that route. I think that, that may be, you know, we want yeah. all the input we can get, and the, we want the, the public to be there, so it may not be an issue. Yeah, the thing that we've said from the beginning, Mr. McFarland, is, is that we want the community involved in this. They were involved in the original Kids sure. Castle. Um, and the more people that come out, the more input that we have, you know, the better I think sure. the project will be. Well, let's just play it by ear. We've got mm -hmm. two willing yeah. volunteers, sure. and we'll, we'll play it by ear. Okay. All right, we'll go there. Um, we want to move this project forward as soon as we can. Uh, that means during the month of December we'll be evaluating proposals and 
We don't know if we'll have it ready to bring back for you for January meeting. If not, it'll be definitely February. But we want to make this a spring project, um, late spring, early summer, um, but really kind of spring project so we can open it up in the spring of 2012. Any questions about the Kids Castle update? Elsie? What is the total cost of that renovation for Kids Castle? Uh, Miss Easter, what we've got in is uh, we've got 150,000 matching, which is 300,000 total. 300. And and the way we have done the proposal um, is is we have challenged the the vendors and the contractors to come up with a project that that is just as energizing as the Kids Castle was 15 years ago. So they're going to turn in their proposals. We've given them a dollar figure to go to. So they're all on a level playing field in terms of money. Uh, what we're going to be looking at is we've got some standard elements in there. We've got some criteria that we need to meet in terms of safety, um, some other regulatory things that they have to meet. Uh, but we're really looking for their creativity. We're looking to see, you know, what elements they put in, how they address it, um, just how much fun they've really kind of put back into the Kids Castle and the renovation. And I think the issue we have at Kids Castle now, you know, 15 years ago, the majority of the material that was used is all pressure treated material, and now over, you know, 15 years or more, it's warped and cupped and coming apart and you know with the advent of, of composite material you know the the life expectancy is going to be much greater and the maintenance will be much less I think you're, I, you're, you're correct the uh, the maintenance is just horrendous now and because of <clears throat> the playground regular regulations that we're under um, as things were modified in the playground regulations over the last 15 years and as things failed we, uh, we couldn't replace them because what it says in there that as you make those replacements you have to make all the corrections and bring everything up so uh, we have taken elements out of service uh, and, and we're down to where it's just very basic um, we were out there yesterday there were still a lot of kids coming in to to Kids Castle, but you know it it really needs renovation, uh, and it's a, it's an ongoing uh, chore really to get everything done that you need to do to just to make that place safe. But there's, there's a couple of things we had talked about earlier. We talked about the safety of the equipment that's in the playground, but also the safety of the children that will be in the playground. With if you're a parent and you take a child out there, sometimes you may lose sight of them. So actually, the sight safety of the children is, is has a lot of importance as well. And Mr. Bradshaw, we mentioned that yesterday when we met with the uh, contractors and the vendors, um, and there was some concerns that we put in the RFP that we wanted them to meet. Um, safety um, is, is a huge issue for us to make sure that we want every kid and every parent that goes out there to have a good quality experience, have fun, and go home safe. Right. And uh, from the from the interior, we want to make sure that it's a low cost application to the city and easy maintenance uh, for the staff that doesn't require a lot of time. So uh, we've we've put those elements in there, and uh, all of those are win win when we get the proposals back. Hopefully, if I could add to that, I have a copy of the um, request for proposals that we put out now, and I wanted to just kind of address in terms of public input and how much we welcome that. The, the RFP, the Request for Proposals, details um, goals of the project, it details the criteria, um, and has a scoring method um, as, in, as far as how it, how it meets the goals and criteria. The proposal review team that Mr. Goodwin mentioned, um, comprised of staff and commission members, original Kids Castle Planning Committee, um, and some others, it reviews that team, and it specifically says this team will solicit public input and will 
will refer to information gathered throughout that process in their decision. So one of the things we've been um, talking about putting together in terms of, um, of, of forums, um, public input meetings, um, some focus groups, uh, to draw some input from, the, from children and families, very similar to the way that the, um, that the original input was put together. We want to put that, we want to put that together and we want to hold the proposal <coughs> review team accountable for interpreting that information to score it as it meets the, the, the request for proposals. So it's not something, we're not looking to avoid public input, but we do want to manage it in a way where it's a kind of a fair assessment. Any other questions or comments? It's going to be a great project. I think so. Thank you. That, that, Thank you. that original Kids Castle was probably one of the most popular venues that we've had in Murfreesboro in a long time. It has. Not only the activity of building it, but just the kids that have played on it throughout the years. It's you know, it was, a, it was an interesting deal. We had um, anywhere from three to 600 people a day. We fed them three meals a day. I remember one day we were getting ready for lunch, and all we had was about 500 pounds of coleslaw. <laughs> and in the middle of the week, we had a tornado, if you remember. We had to evacuate the site. Uh, Bart Walker was on WGNS saying, get them out of Kids Castle, get them out of Kids Castle. You know, so everybody was safe. We, we managed the safety, but we had the little kids out there you know, that was waxing screws and the older adults that were hammering and sawing boards and it's it, you start talking about this project and you start hearing people say I worked on that I was there during that week so it, it's that that playground means a lot to folks in this community thanks Lane okay thank you Next item on our agenda, Rachel Singer has joined us to uh, talk about an arts and nature program proposal. Rachel, welcome. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. I'd like to propose a new program uh, for this spring called Arts in Nature. Uh, the mission of this program would be to connect children with nature through fine arts. Um, the proposed dates are March 19th through the 23rd, and this coincides with the Rutherford County uh, spring break. The times would be 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. Uh, the location would be the Wilderness Station. And uh, basically the schedule for this week would be um, to really expose the kids to, um, to a lot of fine arts and using nature as the model through all of them. So we would look at topics such as sketching, uh, painting, sculpting, uh, music, um, photography, and um, writing and poetry. Um, we would bring in an expert um, um, teacher on each of these topics uh, so the kids would learn firsthand um, proper techniques. They would get to practice. They would get to create. They would get to take their work home with them. Um, and then um, we would also be um, looking at people in history that have used each of these techniques um, through the archived works of the Frist Center. Um, to be on loan to us. Uh, the week will then culminate um, with a field trip to the Frist Center, um, and the kids will be able to um, look at the exhibits that will be going on at that time, and um, hopefully um, taking what they've learned and um, kind of applying it to um, how they interpret um, what we see at the Frist Center. I think it will be a fabulous week. Um, I look for it to be really high quality. Um, I think the kids would be exposed to a lot of things that they haven't been exposed to, and those kids that are already interested in that, I think that they would be able to further their um, love for that and their, um, their techniques. So I'm, I'm looking for approval to move forward with this um, <coughs> program, and then also uh, for the approval of the fees. I was proposing a $75 fee with a $25 activity fee, bringing it to $100 for the week. If you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Any questions for Rachel regarding this program? Rachel, how many uh, kids can you handle? I'm looking at 16, um, and basically that's uh, for our transportation purposes. That looks like a good program, so I move for approval. I have a motion? Need a second. Second. Any discussion? I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> motion carries. Thank you. Rachel, thanks. Good program. Last item on our agenda, Becky Johnson's joined us today to give us an update on uh, current program and events. Becky, welcome. Well, hello, everyone. Actually, my job's a little bit easier. I think Bart covered about half of our programs that we have coming up. But a few others that are interesting um, besides our typical 
programs and aerobics and wellness programs that we offer at our centers and our wonderful wilderness station programs. We have a winter tea party at Cannonsburg Village. Um, it is to uh, celebrate the arrival of winter. You come dressed in your finest attire. Refreshments will be served and there will be a craft. It is for ages 4 to 100, so it's not just for young children. So four and up can come to it. It is Sunday, November 20th from 1 to 2 p.m. or from 3 to 4 p.m. So there's two different time frames there. And it's located at Cannonsburg Village, and the fee is $2.50 per person plus a $1.50 uh, person activity fee, which would be a total of $4 for the program. And if you need any more information or want to sign up because reservation is required for this program, it's uh, call Cannonsburg Village at 890 3 Five, five. And then also on the same day, we have our Sunday Fun Series, which has Make a Present for a Friend. And that you would bring a bag or two of plastic beads or glass beads. Um, Murfreesboro Parks and Rec will provide the tools, the ideas, and the findings. I had to ask what findings were. Those are the little clasps on the jewelry that put them together. Um, it's for families, including single parents and extended families. And that is Sunday, November 20th from 2 to 4 p.m. at Patterson Park. And the fee is a bag of non-perishable food items per family. And for more information on that, you can contact Marlene Sewell at 893-2141. Then we have another winter tea party. This is our winter wonderland tea party. And during this winter's chilly season, you, if you want to take some time out to enjoy a cozy cup of tea with friends, at Patterson Park Community Center. You would wear your favorite holiday dress for this event, and it's for girls for the ages of three to 10. And uh, they will also be making a holiday craft during the tea party, and that is on Saturday, December 10th, from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. at Patterson Park. The fee's $3 per child. And uh, for more information on that, the contact person is Trina Pullum at Patterson. And her number is 893-7439. And then the Sunshine Players has a Sunshine Player Christmas coming up. And the performances for that are December 16th through 18th. On Friday and Saturday, the performance time is 7 o'clock. And on Sunday, it is at 2 o'clock p.m. And it will be held at the theater at Patterson Park. Tickets are $7.50 for adults, $6 for youth and seniors. And the contact person for that is Terry Ann Womack at 893-7439. Then uh, part of our Bicentennial series coming up, we have Christmas at Cannonsburg Village, which is an annual event, but we're going to put our Bicentennial spin. And uh, Christmas at Cannonsburg is intended to celebrate an old-fashioned Christmas and, of course, Murfreesboro's 200th birthday. And it's designed to reach everyone in the community. We will have pictures with Santa, hot apple cider, and a hayride. Murfreesboro City Schools will also be performing in the gazebo. This is for all ages Friday and Saturday evening, December 9th and 10th from 6 to 9 p.m. at Cannonsburg Village, and the event is free. And then we have Santa's Splash and Dash. Come join the lifeguards at the pool at Patterson for activities while parents go last minute Christmas shopping. There'll be pizza, dessert, fun and games. There'll be an arts and craft project which will be a keepsake each parent will cherish for years to come. Santa Splash and Dash will be a good time for all those who attend for ages 7 through 13 on Friday December 16th from 6 to 10 p.m. at the Patterson Park Pool. The fee is five dollars if you pre-register <coughs> If you register the day of, it's $7. And the contact person for that is Kyle Goss at 893-7439. And I know that Bart touched on um, the Runs with Scissors off-road 5K event, but I just want to plug that one last time. It's a December 17th at 9 a.m., and you can register at Sportscom, or you can also go to www.rabbitroadracing.com to register ahead of time. Um, this is a great event. I performed, or not performed, I ran it myself this past July, and it's neat because it's different because you are on pavement, you're on grass, you're on gravel, you hit all kinds of different surfaces, which the average 5K doesn't travel on. 
and it was hot in July. So I'm looking forward to running it in December because I expect that at the very least it shouldn't be too hot. So I encourage our local runners to come out for that 5K event on December 17th. That's it. Thank you. All right, Beck. Any questions about any of these events? A lot of events. A lot of stuff going on. Yeah, yeah we, we do. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Becky. <clears throat> our lot, last item under new business. Is there any other business to come before the commission? No, sir. Being none, we need a motion to adjourn. Happy Thanksgiving. Motion to adjourn. All right. So let's do it. Everybody have a great Thanksgiving.